My name is Mr. Shengoma, and we are having a math class right now. So first we are going to begin by revising the exercise I gave you. After finishing revising the exercise I gave you on 3D symmetry, then we shall go to the exercise I gave you about function, finding um, domain and range. Then after doing the exercises that I've given you, then we shall proceed to something new and that is composite functions. So we really need to be cooperative as the lesson goes on. Okay, so the work I gave you here, exercise number one says, state order of rotation. Remember, I gave the conditions of how to find the order of rotation when you are given the axis. So for example, if you look at question A here, where the axis is pinching, you would realize that that side is a square. So if it's a square, means on that side, you shall have four order of rotation. So our answer is four order. B, look at where the axis is pinching, axis of symmetry. You'd realize it is pinching on the side of a rectangle. So it is two order of rotation. C, also you look at where the axis is pinching, you do see it is an equilateral triangle. If it is equilateral triangle, then the order of rotation will be, will be three. So we shall write three order. We go to part D. Again, you look at where the axis is pinching there. You do realize it is a pinching on the side where we have isosceles triangle. And we know if it is isosceles triangle, it has only one order. Question E. We look at the side where it is pinching and you realize the rectangle. F. You look at the side where it's pinching and you look at the base where this shape is passing through, you do realize it is a line or it is a rectangle, so also it will be two order. G. G is a pyramid. So again, pyramid, if the axis is from up to down, or otherwise we say down to up, we just look at the base surface. So if this surface you see there is a rectangle, so it will give us two order. But if the base there is a circle, it gives us infinite. And if you look at this one, that's a hexagon, means there will be six order. But when you look at I, this axis is, is not proper. It's not balanced exactly in the middle. Hence, the axis is not right. And remember, if you pinch like that and the axis is not right, means it's like, that is not a proper axis. So if it's not a proper axis, we get only one order and the order is at the end. Why? Because it's bending, so it's not a proper axis. But when you look at K, the axis is very proper. So if the axis is very proper and this side here, it will face like a rectangle, so it will be two order. And now here, the axis is facing from the side of the circle. So there will be infinity order. It will be infinite order of, of rotation. Okay, so we proceed to question number two. Question number two says, 
on the shapes below, draw one plane of symmetry. Remember, when they tell you to draw a plane, do not draw a line like this. If you draw like this, this is a line of symmetry. This is not plane of symmetry. So it won't be correct. So whenever they tell you to draw a plane of symmetry, like if it is a circle, you can put a dot in the middle, right? Bend your line like that. And even down, bend your line like that. Then after, draw a line straight till down like this, and another one straight like that. As long as you pass to the center here, and as long as you pass to the center there, that one is a proper uh, plane. But if you don't want to draw vertically, you can choose to draw horizontally like that in the middle. So this one could be a proper plane. So you could draw any of the two. The same to this A. See, when they tell to draw a plane, first look at this top plane, how it looks like, and look at the bottom one. So when you see those ones, how they look like, you copy them and you draw something like those ones. You copy them and you draw something like those ones in the middle. The same with number C. Look at the front triangle and look at the behind the triangle. Then once you understand those two triangles, also go in the middle and you draw a triangle just like those ones. You draw a line. Also, you draw a line bending till down in the middle. And you do something exactly like those front and behind. That's how you draw a plane, a plane of symmetry. So here, when you go to number D, number D, E and F, they're all pyramids. And pyramids, look, all pyramids, they have sharp pointed end at the top, all pyramids. So what you do is, you look at your base surface. You look at the base surface. And you see how the base surface is. You cut a line through the base surface, and you use that line to draw the base. For example, if I look at this line there, and I look at this line here, it tells me my middle line should be like that. See? Then after drawing a middle line like that, then you continue and draw lines going up to the top and coming down till the bottom. Now, this one will be the plane of symmetry. When you look at this one, look, look. If you draw here, it will come a line. So don't draw that one because it's not advisable to draw a line. What you do, you choose the other method. So you cut like this, right? And then you go up. And also this side, you go up. Then you create the plane of symmetry. But if you don't want this one, also, you can choose another one. Because the down one is a square. Then you can go diagonal. See, like that. Then you make this one your plane of symmetry, diagonal. Since a square, you can cut it diagonally, like that. For this one, I said, draw a line through the center, like that. You can see the center. Then go up till the top. And that will be our plane of symmetry, just like that. OK, number three. Draw an axis on the shape below, such that the shape has two order of rotation. Draw an axis such that the shape has two order. Now, when you look at this shape A, this side, it is a triangle. And this triangle is equilateral. So if it is equilateral, means it will give us order three. So I cannot draw axis here. If I draw axis here, I am wrong. So this is not correct. So because it gives me order, order three. So what I do is, I have to go on the other surface here where there is a rectangle so I can draw my axis there where the rectangle is. Why? Because here we have a rectangle. A rectangle has order two. A rectangle has order two. So my axis can pass through there. B, one order. Now this one order, I cannot draw here. Because if I draw here, we have two order, one and two. So this side will be wrong. In order to get only one order, I have to draw the side of isosceles triangle there. 
the side of isosceles triangle. Why? Because I know an isosceles triangle has only one order. And this is how we were supposed to do this revision exercise, which I sent to you. Now let's proceed to the next homework. Okay, we looked at the introduction of functions and we had these questions to solve. We had these questions to solve. So when, when you look at them, you'd realize that, there we go. Number one says find f of five. So we know f function is here. We know the f function is there. This is the f function. So I need to use that f function to solve a, b, and c. So here, where there is x, let me write the function, fx is equal to 1 minus 2x. So here, my x is given as 5. So that means where there is x, I'm going to substitute with 5. So I will get 5 times 2 is 10. So 1 minus 10, I get minus 9. Number 2, I'm going to substitute with minus 5. So 1 minus 2, on the place of x, I keep minus 5. So I will get 1 plus 10, and my answer will be 11. F3, I know my function is 1 minus 2x, so I keep 1 minus 2 bracket, I, on the place of x, I keep 4, like that. Right, so on the place of x, I keep 1 over 4. So that will be uh, a half, so 1 minus a half. And then my final answer will be a half. So that's how we use the function f. Now let's go to b, e, and f. b, e, and f, they are using function g. And this is my function g there. That's my function g. So my function g says x power 3 over 10. So on the place of x, I have to keep 2 there. On the place of x, I have to keep 2. So I will get 2 power 3 over 10. And that will be 8 over 10. And when I simplify, I get 4 over 5. Good. Let's go to the second one here, e. I use again function of g. So on the place of x, I keep 3. Minus 3, sorry. So I'll get minus 3 power 3 over 10, because that's the function of g. So when I open the bracket up, it will be minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3. I get minus 27 over 10. Then I have to write this function as a mixed fraction. So when I write as mixed fraction, I get this. OK, there. G, I replace with a half on the place of x. So I get a half power 3 over 10. So a half times a half times a half, I get 1 over 8. So it is like I have 1 over 8 over 10. And when I work it out, I end up with 1 over 80. Okay, now we go for G. H I. So G H I, we are going to use the function of there. We are going to use the function of H. And the function of H says 12 over X. So on the place of X, I have to keep the value given. So for G, we are given 3, H of 3. So on the place of X, I have to keep 3. So that means I will have 12 over 3, and my answer would be 4. Next here, I have 12 over x. So on the place of x, I have to keep 10 because I'm given 10. So my final answer would be, this is 1, 2 over 10. And when I simplify, I get 1, 1 over 5. h, 1 over 3. So that means I have 12. On the place of x, I have 1, 1 over 3. So when I work it out, I get out of 6. 
All right, that's how we were supposed to do question number one. That's how we were supposed to do question number number one. So let's move on to question number number two. Let's move on to question number two. There we go. Question number two, find X. So find X means we are finding the domain. We are finding the question. We are given the, the range. We are given one, the answer. We are given the Y, right? Because remember we said any function is equal to Y. So if my function is equal to Y, that means here uh, FX is equal to Y. Means my Y is one. So it's like I know Y. So I need to find X. So we said we replace, we replace FX with the function. And remember our function is one minus two X. So we shall replace here one minus two X is equal to one. So you collect like terms. One will come this side, and this one will go that side. So I'll have one minus one is equal to two X. So that is zero is equal to two X. And finally, therefore, my X will be zero. Second one, also we shall replace FX we shall replace fx with one minus two x. So I have one minus two x is equal to minus 11. Remember when you're finding for x, you have to do substitution. You remove fx, you keep its function. All right, so you collect like terms again. So one plus 11 is equal to two x. Like this two x here, like this two negative two x here comes the other side and also, this negative 11 comes this side. All right, so when I work it out, I get here 12 is equal to 2x. So when I divide by two, I get my x is six. h of x, so I have to substitute h of x with the function, and the function is 12 over x is equal to one. 12 over x is equal to one. So I cross multiply times x times x. So x is gone this side. So my 12 is equal to x, and that's the answer. All right, we go to D, gx. So I need to substitute my gx there. I need to substitute my gx. And when I substitute my gx, remember my gx is x power 3 over 10 is equal to 100. So when I cross multiply times 10 this side, times 10 this side, I get 1,000. So now I have to move this, I'll do cube root, and also this side I'll do cube root, and my x will be 10. Next, I have to substitute h, and remember, function for h in this question is 12 over x. So I have to keep 12 over x is equal to 24. Cross multiply, I get 12 is equal to 24x. So over 24, over 24, so 12 divided by 24 is a half. So my x is a half. Next, I have to substitute g. And remember my g is 3x over 10 is equal to 0 0.8. I cross multiply times 10, times 10. So I have x power three is equal to eight. I do cube root. I do cube root. I get my x is equal to, to two. So this is how we were supposed to solve this exercise which I sent to you. This is how we are supposed to do that exercise. Then yesterday I sent you another exercise. Yesterday I sent you another exercise. There are some people who did it and sent me. One of them is Said. He did and sent me the work and fantastic, he did a good job. All right, so for those who did not do, let's do it now. Exercise two, given function, that one f, and given that function g, and given that function h. Question one, solve f of two. So f of two means I'm given my x as two. So I go to the function of f and I replace x with two. So I get my answer six. B, g of four, g of four. So I go on the place of 
I go on the place of x and I replace with four. So I get four square and that is uh, 16. C, I go on the place of h. I go on the place of h. Where the function is x there, I keep 10. So that means I will have 10 over two and my answer would be, would be five. Okay, so we proceed to question number two. Question number two says, find x. Remember, whenever we are finding x, we need to replace. Whenever we are finding x, we need to, we need to replace. Whenever we are finding x, we need to replace. That is like substitution. So where there is fx, I remove fx, I keep the function. The function is 3x for this question. So to find x, I divide by three both sides and by x would be five. I got question B. Gx is equal to 25. Right, so I have to substitute Gx and Gx is x squared. So I keep x squared is equal to 25. So in order to get x, I do square root, square root, and my x will be five. C, hx is equal to four. So I need to substitute hx with its function and the function for hx is x over two is equal to four. So I times by two, I times by two, and my x will be, will be eight. All right. So that's how we are supposed to solve. Then let's go to question number three. There we go. So for question number three, find x again. But in this case, this side we need to substitute and also this side we need to substitute. So function for fx is three x. So I keep three x. Function for hx is x over two, right? So I multiply by two. I multiply by two, two is gone. I get six X is equal to X. So six X minus X is equal to zero. So five X is equal to zero over five over five. My X is zero. Two, I have to substitute G X, right? And my G X is X square. Also, I have to substitute my fx, and my fx is 3x. Okay. Simply, there is x this side, and there is x this side. I can get rid of it. x and x is gone. Square is gone. Hence, my x is 3. That is how we were supposed to work out this exercise. Hope you all did well. So now we need to move forward. We need to move forward to what we are supposed to do today. Today we are looking at composite function. Today we are looking at composite functions. So when you're talking about composite function, here, this, there, this is having more than one function together. This is having more than one function together. For example, we are used of having like fx, but now we are having this, we are having ffx, right? That is having more than one function together. Or we are having fgx, right? Or we are having hfgx, or even more etc, right? So this first one here, this is we call one combination. And this second one also it is one combination. This third one is representing three, two combination, right? One combination means original and another one. That's one combination, right? Original one here and another one, that's one combination. Two combination means original function, another function and another function. So that is composite function. We are having more than one function together. We are having more than one function together. Right, so this implies that one function goes in the other. This implies that one function goes in the other. The function closest 
to our domain, the function closest to our domain, and remember we said our domain is x, okay, will always be the first, then the next function will follow, like here. Look at this AG. Here we have function f, which is close to x. So this is our first function. Then after this function, though, we get the second one, right? Look at two. We have got f g h x. We have got f g h x. So first, you must do h because h is closest to x. Then the answer you get, you will use it to solve for the next one. That is g. And then when you solve g, the answer you get, you use it to solve the last one, that is f. So let's see the real example here. Question one here. We are given f g of two. So because we are given f g of two, x is two. So first of all, we need to solve g, right? Then when we solve g, we get the answer for g is four. So after getting the answer for g is four, this answer becomes the bracket for the next one. Then after we solve the second one, we get 13. Finally, this becomes now the answer for the question. So f g of two becomes the answer. Let's look at the second one here. You can see that. We have h g f, h g f of three. So the first one you have to solve is f because f is closest to the bracket. f is closest to the bracket. So when we solve f like that, that is step one, we get 10. Now 10 becomes the bracket for step two. And remember, step two is g, there, g. So the answer becomes the bracket for the second one. Then we work out the second one, and remember the function is x squared there. The function is x squared. So when we work out x squared here, we get x squared means we get 10 squared, and that is 100. Then after getting 100, we go to the third step up here. Look at this second arrow. That's our third step, h. Because our answer was 100. So our 100 becomes the bracket for the third one, h. And remember, our function for h is there, that one. So on the place of x, we shall keep 100. And we get 100 plus 5 over 2. And then this is our answer final. So that's how we, that's how we solve this kind of, of function. So I put example 3 there for uh, you to attempt, so you attempt it later. So let's see exercise, how we are supposed to do. Let's see how we were supposed to do in the exercise. I will do number one and number two. I will leave you to do the rest of the questions at your time. So question one, I'm doing it for you. First, I need to solve H. First, I need to solve H. So H of two, the function is this one here. So that means two bracket, I write two minus five. Hence I get four minus five gives me minus one. So this is the answer for the first one. Remember, after doing the first one, I'm left with the second one, that is F. So this answer becomes the bracket for the first one. So for, for the second one. So it means now I need to solve F of negative one. So that means I have three negative one square minus one. So this means three minus one, I get two. So therefore, f h of two will be two. Second one, I need to solve f of two as the first one. So three, two square minus one. This is four, four times this is 12 minus one, I get 11. So I need to solve now h of 11, and that is two, 11 minus five, 22 minus five, I get 17. And that is my final answer, 17. So you will do number three and the rest for these composite functions. Thank you for having a great class today.